Good evening all. I am Dr. Guru Sandhya and today we will be discussing about gas loss and anesthesia. Every day in and day out, we see lots of patients and we manage lots of patients. At every one of the other step, we are involved in this gas loss in anesthesia, at least four or five loss in our day-to-day -day practice. It is imperative to know how these laws operate in a practical-based manner rather, rather than learning it as a gas loss and anesthesia in a very theoretical manner. I would like to give a brief narratory information about these gas laws in anesthesia and how do they work in our day-to-day -day practice with few practical aspect points. And uh, I'll just move on to the session. So for these gas laws, the basic concepts always involves around volume, pressure and temperature. These three variables are always imperative and these gas laws uh, waver around these three primary points in the given sector. So what is a gas is a substance that is in a gaseous state above its critical temperature and vapor is a substance which is in gaseous phase below its critical temperature. And critical temperature is the temperature above which the gas cannot be liquefied how much amount of pressure you apply. The critical temperature of nitrous oxide is 36.5 degrees Celsius and for oxygen it is around minus 118 degrees Celsius. And for all practical purposes, whatever oxygen which is supplied in novel cylinder exists as a gaseous form and there is no liquid form except for the liquefied oxygen which is available in liquid oxygen tanks. Our oxygen is only available as a gaseous mixture. And what is volume? Volume is a space occupied by a substance at any given point measured, which is measured in a three-dimensional manner. So it can be either measured as a cubic millimeter or cubic meter or as a liter. And uh, what is pressure? It is a force divided by area. So it is a kilopascal is Newton divided by meter square. And there are very many uh, units at which the pressure is measured and it is imperative to know all these because uh, in our pressure gauge there will be bar and in another pressure gauge there will be PSI. So you have to interchange, convert and know all the <clears throat> in interchangeable parameters in this pressure. So 100 kilopascal is one atmosphere which is 760 millimeters of mercury or 760 tor or 14.7 PSI is equal to one bar. So our oxygen cylinder will be somewhere close to 2000 uh, PSIG or 137 bar. So that all parameters has to be remembered. And uh, standard temperature and pressure. So whatever temperature which is said and done in the ideal gas law is 273 Kelvin, which is zero degree Celsius. What is room temperature for us is taken as 20 degree Celsius. So you must convert each and every uh, gas which is given to us at 293 Kelvin rather than maintaining it as same at 273 Kelvin. 273 Kelvin or 0 degree Celsius is standard temperature. One atmosphere or 101 kilopascal is given as the standard pressure. <coughs> uh, and these gas laws or the three ideal gas laws were Boyle's law, Charles law and gay lussex law. And what is Boyle's law is at constant temperature for a fixed mass of gas, volume is inversely proportional to pressure. As you can see, in this, the temperature is constant. In both, the temperature is constant. Here, the volume is 2 liters and pressure is 1. And if the volume is decreased to 2 liters, the pressure is increased to 2. So whenever the volume is inversely proportional to pressure, the volume was more, the pressure was less. The volume is less, the pressure is more. So volume is inversely proportional to pressure is the <clears throat> Boyle's law. So what is the practical application of Boyle's law? As I said earlier, oxygen literally exists only as a gaseous form in whatever type of cylinder which is available to us. Say it is an E-type cylinder. So that follows Boyle's law. So whenever something follows Boyle's law, the Borden's pressure gauge, I, I'm not jumping into the uh, mechanics behind the Borden's pressure gauge, which is out of the scope of this lecture. And Borden's pressure gauge actually acts as a content gauge in, uh, in per se oxygen, but not true so for nitrous oxide, which I'll explain it later. So Borden's pressure gauge acts as a content gauge in case of oxygen. And you can use um. the for, pardon me. 
you can use boyle's law for measuring how much amount of oxygen you are going to supply to a particular patient with the particular available cylinder so all medical gases for which are available in our setup is stored in under large amounts of pressure in small volume and these gases are delivered to the patients at atmospheric pressure say uh, the oxygen cylinder is has an internal capacity of 5 liters so when it is full it is supplied us uh, at the atmospheric pressure at the highest pressure of uh, 13800 psig or it is 137 bar or it is 2000 psig i mean uh, Uh, psi in gauge meter so how much of the oxygen will be available at atmospheric pressure is what you want to know the cylinder has that much in atmospheric pressure how much will it supply so as boyle's law says p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 v1 is the volume in the cylinder which is 5 liter p1 in the pressure in the cylinder that is either 2000 psig or 137 bar or 1000 13800 kilopascals and p2 is the atmospheric pressure so what is the volume of gas which is remaining at the atmospheric pressure is what you want to know so atmospheric pressure is 100 kilopascals as we have said seen in the earlier slides so p1 v1 divided by p2 is equal to v2 so a normal e type cylinder will give somewhere around 690 liters of oxygen uh, provided it is used continuously and the boyle's law is also used in the measurements of lung volumes and capacities using the body plethysmography so uh, suppose you say the cylinder is somewhere uh, in the previous example we have seen it is uh, 13800 kilopascals suppose you say the cylinder is or uh, the bordens pressure gauge is showing around 700 7000 kilopascals so what will be the amount of oxygen which will be remaining in the cylinder so 7000 kilopascals into volume of cylinder is 5 liters divided by 100 so t 50 liters suppose if the podens pressure gauge is showing only 2000 kilopascals then again 2000 into 5 divided by 100 it will give only 100 liters suppose you say if you use 6 liters of oxygen per minute when there is a 2000 kilopascal in the bordens pressure gauge then the cylinder would last for around 100 as you said it is 100 no the remaining liters is 100 divided by 6 liters per minute the cylinder will last only for 16 minutes that is how you calculate how much amount of uh, oxygen is remaining and when do you need the oxygen cylinder proper and one should know the remaining the last 5 liters will always remain in the cylinder so you you should not calculate 100 divided by 6 you should actually calculate it as 95 divided by 6 so the cylinder will last only for 15 minutes and it last and it never last more if at all you want it to last more you have to come down on the flows which you are using so full e type cylinder will last for 220 minutes if it is used at 3 liters per minute it's a simple calculation and what are all the practical implications is whenever you are shifting a patient from an icu or from operation theater to any scans or anywhere always check the oxygen transportation cylinder whether the uh, bar is adequate whether it is at least 100 bars then only you can say that the um, uh, cylinder will last for how many minutes and will it actually complete within that particular time whether you are going for an mri with the cylinder placed outside you are going for an mri of around 45 minutes but the cylinder will last only for 16 minutes then you have to take another oxygen cylinder and go in uh, if you do not then you will actually land up in delivering a hypoxic mixture to the patient so whenever you are troubleshooting whenever you mount a cylinder e type cylinder or to a uh, boyle's machine you always have to make sure that you are supplying at least 1000 psig so 2000 psig is 690 liters so 1000 psig is 3 330 liters so this is a prerequisite for mounting uh, oxygen cylinder across boyles and oxygen is all uh, in most of the ventilators oxygen only is used as a driving gas for the minute ventilation for the patient so at that point of time whenever you are in oxygen shortage you should uh, switch over to manual ventilation rather than giving for a ventilator driven gas so these are the practical applications of boyle's law so one should always remember liquid oxygen plant is given for uh, extracting larger amount of oxygen from a particular source so 1 liter uh, 861 liters of uh, gas will be extracted from every liters of liquid oxygen which is boiled and heated to a particular temperature then comes the charles law 
Charles la, uh, uh, we can always remember it as Charles is under constant pressure. Prince Charles is under constant pressure. So at constant pressure, volume is directly proportional to temperature. So as you can see uh, here, the pressure is constant. P1, P2, P3. Three of it is constant. And here you are actually giving temperature, heating it, heating it. As you can see, when you heat, the volume expands. So the volume from V1 to V3 expands. So volume is directly proportional to temperature at constant pressure is Charles law. So what are the practical applications of Charles law which you will take is, as I said earlier, the critical temperature of nitrous oxide is 36.5. So you cannot liquefy with further after 36.5 degrees Celsius. It practically remains as a liquid at 20 degrees Celsius. So in the, in the nitrous oxide cylinder, up until all the nitrous oxide is converted into vapor, the pressure gauge will continue to show as 760 PSIG. The only when it is completely liquid is completely replaced by vapor, will then the PSIG fall from 750. Whenever it is starting to fall, then only the nitrous oxide pressure gauge, Borden's pressure gauge, will act as a content gauge. So up until it is completely transferred into vapor form, the Borden's pressure gauge does not fall from 750 PSI in nitrous oxide cylinder. So in a nitro nitrous oxide cylinder, totally in a knee type cylinder, it has 1680 liters at standard temperature and pressure. So how do you calculate at 20 degrees Celsius? Standard temperature and pressure is zero degree. Uh, zero